Hey guys, this is Aaron. Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about wiring diagrams. I've never really had to use wiring diagrams in the past, but it just so happens that I'm doing a project with the seat heaters in my car, and I'm going to need to do some electrical work. So that got me to look at the wiring diagram for my car, which made me realize I know nothing about wiring diagrams. So after doing some research myself and figuring some things out, I figured I'd make this video to share it with you. After you learn some of the basics, it's really not as complicated as it looks. Wiring diagrams are definitely intimidating when you look at one for the first time, which was me a few days ago. So I'm gonna to try to break down for you how to read electric wiring diagrams, as well as explain a little bit about how the electrical system in your car works. So let's start off by looking at a basic circuit. A circuit starts with a power source, and in our cars, that is a battery. Your battery has a positive side and a negative side, and all the components in the circuit are connected by metal wires. So these lines are the metal wire. On the positive side, there is usually a fuse, and that is to limit the amount of current that flows through the circuit. That fuse will protect all of the components that are in the circuit, as well as the wires that make up the circuit. Now in most circuits, there is a switch that will allow you to connect or disconnect the circuit to stop the current from running through it, because most things in your circuit you don't want on all of the time. Next is your load. That's just a general term for all the components in your circuit that you want to supply power to. Examples of that include your head unit, your speakers, the headlight bulbs, you know, things that need power. And after the load is your ground or the negative side. So every load needs a pathway to get back to ground. Most car batteries have a cable that goes from the negative terminal of the battery to the chassis of the car somewhere. This is super handy because it means that you do not have to run a wire from the load back to the negative side of the battery for every single load. Anywhere on the chassis will act like a ground and allow the current to return to the negative terminal of your battery. Pretty cool, huh? This is an electrical wiring diagram, and it is just a bunch of these simple circuits bunched together, albeit a little more complex. The diagrams I'm showing you are coming out of the service manual for the 97-04 Porsche Boxster that my dog has taken a liking to. Now this book just happens to have a really good section at the beginning of their electrical wiring diagrams that explain the diagrams in this book. The symbols and abbreviations here are specific to Porsche, but other manufacturers and electrical wiring diagrams are very similar to this one. Now you'll typically see a border on your diagrams that look like this. This is called the location coordinate grid. It's an alphanumeric grid that's very helpful in figuring out where these components are laid out in the diagram itself, not where they're located in the car. The components are often labeled with a name. For example, this is a main switch. And on the components, you will see the pin layouts. This has one and two, so there are two pins in the main switch. So you'll notice on each wire, there is a number and two letters. The number is the thickness of the wire in millimeters, and the letters are a code for the color of the wire. In this case, it is black, so you know that this is a one millimeter black wire. This is the wiring color codes that Porsche uses. As you can see, most of them are pretty self-explanatory and make sense. Throughout the car's wiring harness, there are many connectors. I'm sure you have seen them before. A lot of wiring diagrams use the letter C followed by a number to tell you which connector it is. Porsche uses X. So right here, you can see that these pins belong to connector 05. Here is a list of all of the connectors for the Boxsters. You can see that it tells you not only a general location of where they are, but it tells you how many pins they are and what color the connector is. As you know, cars have lots of different options that you can get them with when you purchase them, and some include things that other cars do not have. So in order to have a complete wiring diagram, it's often necessary to indicate when these wires are coming with a certain option. So the way Porsche does this is they have an M followed by three numbers, and those are the M option codes. The M09 is for the Boxster 2.5 liter. The M454 is for cars with cruise control. And the M481 is for five speed manual transmissions. So your wiring diagram should have a lookup table where you can see all of those options and see what they are in English. Now, some of these wires terminate into a big block of stuff like this. So let me break this one down. There are three separate components of this. First is the D152. 
That tells you where in the wiring diagram this one goes to because it does not go to something that they can show you on this page because these pages would be way overcrowded if they put everything on top of each other. So D152 refers to this border. So you would go to D and then these numbers increase as you start flipping the pages. So as you can see for this example of the instrument cluster, they are 11 down through 20 and you flip the page and it goes 21 down to 30. So you would keep flipping until you find that number. You find the letter at the top and then in that area, you would find another one of these boxes that would point back to the previous one. So the second component of that is 15. It is an indication of where the positive voltage is supplied from. So there's a table that has the electrical terminal designations and you can see that 15 means that it originates at the ignition switch and it supplies power when the ignition switch is in the run or start position. Another common one is 30, which means it's connected directly to the battery positive voltage. So as long as the battery is connected, it is gonna be supplying power. So you don't have to have the car on. Anything with a 30 is always getting power. And a 31 is the ground. So it is connected to a ground somewhere. And finally, the third component is this SI on top of it. SI indicates a fuse designation. So B7 is the fuse position. So if you go look at the fuse locations, you can look at B7 and see exactly what fuse it, this wire is connected to. So if we look at this wire, we can tell it's continued on G162, wherever that is in the wiring diagram, and the 31 means that it was connected to ground. So when they are connected to ground, Porsche actually goes as far as to tell you which grounding point it is connected to. So it's connected to grounding point four. And wouldn't you know it, they have a diagram that shows you where all of those grounding points are. And they even have charts like this. If you are looking for something specific, you can look and see exactly which grounding point it is connected to. So one more piece of terminology. If the wire comes like this and hits a 110 and splits off, that tells you that this is a welded splice. So in the harness, they have welded and spliced off the wire to go to two different places. So one more thing you might see is a BS followed by a number. The BS stands for bridge point and 14 slash two is the location on the relay panel one. Now, how would you know that? Because there's a chart for bridge point assignments on relay panel one. So if we come down here and look for that 14 slash two, we can see that it is in relay socket 17. So if we come over here, we find socket 17 and here is 14 slash two. All right, guys, hopefully that's not as scary now when you look at a wiring diagram. Please subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. And in an upcoming episode, I take some new seats that have the heated seat element and install them into my base boxer that did not come with the heated seat option. And I'm going to try to use some of my newfound knowledge to make that all work. So you'll want to be sure to stay tuned for that. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.